I'm Old Big Line. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, after 18 months uh, and over 199 expert witnesses, the uh, Cullen Commission on Money Laundering in the province and its impact on real estate has finally come out with their results. And, you know, I have paid zero attention to this as for the last year and a half. If you guys have been watching my blogs here for the past, just the last five years or so, you know, I've talked about this many times about the myth of money laundering. And what I mean by that is the, as I've said many times before here, has anyone ever bought a home over the last 10 or 15 years in Vancouver or the Lower Mainland with ill-gotten gains or money that wasn't declared in Canada uh, uh, that was, uh, you know, money laundered? Absolutely. There's probably been dozens, if not hundreds of homes over the last decade or so that that's the case. But what I've gone on to say is it doesn't have any meaningful impact on the prices. Does it, in other words, does it move the needle on our current home prices here in the lower mainland, especially Vancouver? Absolutely not. Zero. As I've said before, the NDP has come out with numbers uh, saying as much as four or five billion dollars has been laundered through the system through casinos and, and various other methods. And I've said, it, that has also been proven to be on the high end. Nobody, no charges have ever been laid. That has never been substantiated. But as I've gone on to say, even if that was the case, five billion, six billion, let's call it 10 billion over the last 10 years, that is not going to move the needle one iota on a trillion dollar with a T over the last eight to 10 years that has been sold in the lower mainland. I always go back, my office, McDonald Westmark, we, we're one of 150 real estate brokerages working the lower mainland in, in BC here. Our, my office alone did $2.5 billion in sales in 2021. We'll probably go over or pretty, come pretty close to $3 billion this year just in my office. You know, I'm probably myself approaching three quarters, probably close to a billion dollars that I've personally sold over the last 10 years or so. So when you put it into contest, it's not going to move the needle. But I know there's people out there, the NDP perpetuates this endlessly. They want to create a boogeyman. It's that sleight of hand that I keep talking about. They, they want to tell you that the runaway home prices and the unaffordability and the lack of supply and all that stuff is on things like money laundering or foreign buyers or empty homes. It's sleight of hand to take, take your mind or your eye off the ball on the, in the, the mistakes that the governments have made because they're the ones that are to blame. I go back and watch my blogs. I've done dozens of blogs on NDP, but all governments, federal government that have caused our current situation. Lack of supply, very difficult to get anything built here. And then of course, taxing everything to death. They continue to try and uh, tax or stifle the demand side instead of doing something with the supply side. So I'll cut right to the chase here. This whole Cullen Commission, in my opinion, was a giant waste of time. I've already told you guys the results of this, that money laundering had no material impact. But just for those that are still out there, that I get comments all the time talking about money laundering and that's why they can't buy a house. Uh, the Cullen Commission found that there is no evidence that money laundering is causing housing unaffordability. There you go. After 18 months, 10, 15, 20 million dollars a taxpayer, hundreds and hundreds of witnesses, they told you what I already told you five years ago, that this is not going to have a material impact on a business over the last 10 years that's done well in excess of a trillion dollars in sales. You know, again, it's sleight of hand here, folks. The government wants to create these boogeymen to take your eyes off of the real reasons. And again, those real reasons are, many of them are being caused by government, especially the city of Vancouver and our provincial government, the NDP. All governments are inept. NDP, in my opinion, is especially inept. So these taxes, have a look. 
you know, what has the empty homes tax done? What has the BC spec tax done? They promised that that was going to bring uh, homes to make homes more affordable, add more supply. It's done the reverse. Home prices are at all time highs. Uh, supply is at 10 year lows or close to it. We're starting to get a little more supply now, but it's still well below our 10 year average. And then if you really want the final kicker, have a look at our current rental market. I've done many blogs. I'll do some more later this summer. I have never seen anything like this coiled spring effect on our rental market. If you're a landlord like myself, this is a dreamland that we're in right now. I am seeing huge spikes on one bedroom and two bedroom condos in downtown Vancouver. Condos that were renting for 2100 two and a half years ago prior to COVID, you're now getting 25, 2600 a month. Now, and you'll see this in the news coming up later this summer and into the fall, I'm already hearing stories now about bidding wars now going on on rental condos. They run the ad on Craigslist, one bed, one bath. 2600 a month, they get 15 phone calls on it, they get 10 applications on the first day, and people are bidding on them. You want 2500 I'll give you 2800 and I'll give you six months rent up front. Those are the kind of stories I'm hearing. This is the result of stifling development, taxing everything to death, uh, and, and uh, but of course they'll tell you that it's money laundering and it's empty homes and it's foreign buyers that have brought these prices up. Let's tax all that to death and that'll solve the problem. And it's not. And this Cullen Commission, again, I know people are out there thinking that money laundering is a massive part of what's going on in the housing market. And again, it's not. It's not moving the needle. Even if that four or five billion dollars they say, which was gr grossly embellished, even if that was true, it still wouldn't even have a scratch on a two, three hundred billion dollar annual business in the Greater Vancouver Real Estate Board. I'm Owen Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.